Jack. Yes. Got a cool explainer video today. Okay. We got a I mean, special guest. All, Neil, they're all cool. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank they're, you. They're all thank cool you. Explainer videos. Okay. <laughs> I got one of my people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get him right off the top. I got Brian Cox. Brian, welcome to Star Talk. This is not your first rodeo with us, but I'm just saying, welcome back. It's a, a pleasure to be back with you. Um, I should I should say for all the people watching, you should have seen the behind the scenes because you all think it goes really smoothly and it's a well oiled machine. Don't you? I think it's taken us half an hour to plug the microphone in. Hasn't it? Yes, but it is. It's, I just... it's almost like ten monkeys typing out something for Fox News. <laughs> Inside joke, people. Inside joke. <laughs> so, uh, Professor Brian Cox, he's professor of particle physics at the University of Manchester and. He's also uh, at the Royal Society. Uh, what is your title there? As a, the a, Professor for Public Engagement in Science. Professor Ooh. for Public Engagement in Science. Oh, we need one um, of you at every single institution <laughs> in the world. No, 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 no. Ch every single street corner. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, though, if we had one at every so single corner? So I'm just saying Europe is, is leading this, or England especially, the UK, uh, there are multiple professorships for the public understanding of things. Wow. Uh, and uh, so they understand the value, public understanding of science, public understanding of math. There's another one, a public understanding of, of risk. Am I right mm. on that, Brian? Did, yes. Did I get uh, the full list there? Sir David Spiegelhalter is a... And, and as you say, um, as you, well, as your great friend Carl Sagan said, we, we live in societies that are based on science and technology, whether we accept it or like it or not. And therefore, to have a functioning democracy, people need to know a little bit, at least, about the process, how we acquire reliable knowledge. And that's been so visible in the pandemic, where right, you've seen right. an ever-shifting understanding of something that wasn't right. even known about two and a half years ago. Right. And I think it is difficult for people to understand where, how to get reliable knowledge and uh, trusted sources. Uh, so, Brian, I, by my read of the of the landscape, you are more popular as a physicist in the UK than Carl Sagan ever was as an astronomer in America. And because you were a literal rock star. You know, they say, oh, you're a rock star of physics. No, you were actually a rock star. <laughs> just, just remind me of this. You had a top 10 song on the charts. We, what, had, a, what, what? we had a number one. Oh, we just, had a number excuse one. me. <laughs> <laughs> So who was but, we? What, was, what group was that well, and when was I, this? I, I've been in two bands actually. One was a rock band called Dare, which was, um, actually, I'm in Los Angeles at the moment and we, co we recorded our first album in 1987, I think it was, in, in Los Angeles. So remarkable. It's the first time I'd ever been out of the country. But then I had another band called D-Ream and we had a song called Things Can Only Get Better, which is a gross misunderstanding of the second law of thermodynamics. And I'm, I, I, given what I've learned later, I'm very ashamed about the title and it should have had a series of caveats that entropy always includes. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, anyway. it was a hopeful. It's, you know, in America, it's okay to be hopeful about things. Yeah, but, but that song was in number one. And, and ultimately, uh, Tony Blair used it in his election campaign in 1997. So it became a very famous song in the UK. Wow. So, so we, so you were more famous as a rock star before you became famous as a physicist. Yeah, well, I was a keyboard player though, and we, you know, keyboard players. It's, it's kind of a cliche, isn't it? Because obviously, a physicist would be a keyboard player. Yes. <laughs> with all the <laughs> lights and. Yeah, you're not going to be. A you're not going to be a lead guitarist and then become <laughs> a, a physicist. That's. <laughs> <laughs> well, ah, you say that, but Brian May. Oh, Brian oh, May. Brian May, you're right. Has a PhD in astrophysics. Yeah, oh, that's right. D there you go. There you go. Yeah, so it's this British invasion. You guys, like, what's up with you all? Plus, you still have the Beatles haircut. I mean, come on. Now. I, I think I'm getting a bit old for that. I, I think. <laughs> no, I, I think I should. No, you. Hey, listen, listen. It down. Hey, Brian, you rock that as long as you can, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do with when you got hair like that. You just rock it as long as you can. <laughs> well, you've written books. You've made all kinds of uh, TV series for the uh, BBC uh, on on the universe, on the solar system, on on. One was on life too. Is that right? Or was it yeah. tackling all the frontiers of important, interesting frontiers? And there's some people who still come up to me and say they want to see another nerd fight with you that I had a few years back over Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it was like well, nerd fight, nerd fight. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 
passively started it because I didn't know you were paying attention. I said, because I think I'd just come back from Comic-Con, and so I, I addressed my tweet to Comic-Coners, and I said, you know, if lightsabers are beams of light, then since beams of light can pass through each other, just see what flashlights do, <laughs> then, then you couldn't have a saber fight with the blades bouncing off each other. Hmm. And, 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 and I was perfectly happy putting that out there, mm -hmm. but no, Brian Cox has to ruin my perfect tweet. <laughs> so Brian, what some, was your rebuttal? With, well, with, with some particle physics facts. Okay, Brian. Well, no, he's not Pascal, it, it's, it's nature facts. It's <laughs> okay. Um, no, I, I'd, I'd um, worked on um, what we call gamma gamma scattering, which is photons, particles of light scattering off each other. So at very high energies, then there is a reasonable probability that two, two particles of light, two photons, will bounce off each other. And gamma rays are the high energy that turn uh, David Banner into the Hulk. Right. So exactly. that's some serious high energy there. Yeah. There is okay. that, but it's even higher energy than that. But so, so it was kind of a pedantic um, point. I've got a track record, by the way. Um, um, Eric Idle, you, you, well, you have been on our show, The Infinite Monkey Cage, with Eric Idle. Um, he, he asked me once. Eric Idle of, of Monty Python. Uh, Monty thing. Python, Eric Idle. Uh, when they did live shows in London, um, he asked me to do a video criticising the Galaxy song. So those of you that don't know, he, there's a very famous, in, in the meaning of life, a song, a Monty Python song called The Galaxy Song. And it says how fast the Earth's revolving and it's in orbit around the sun. And I said, well, it's not quite in a circular orbit, it's in an elliptical orbit. And so there are things that, are, just as a joke, there are errors. And so he asked me to call Stephen Hawking and uh, see if Stephen Hawking would be in a comedy sketch with us. And Stephen agreed. And the sketch was that I would be criticising the Galaxy song in Cambridge by the river, saying, well, of course, that's inaccurate because there's elliptical orbits and blah, blah, blah. And uh, the sun is not the source of all our power because there's, uh, there are, there are, there's uranium and it's other stars. It wasn't the sun that, and all this sort of stuff. And Stephen comes flying along the river in his wheelchair and knocks me to the ground and says, I think you're being pedantic. And then, he's, <laughs> and then he starts singing the Galaxy song. So uh, you're in, in good his, company. In his Stephen Hawking voice, yes. Okay. Yes, so, so you're in good company accusing me of being pedantic because Stephen Hawking also <laughs> famously I, accused me of being pedantic. I, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, that was the most intricate way of dropping a name I've ever experienced. <laughs> well... I'm, I called Stephen Hawking. I'm just, hey, I, pop, I'm just, I got my speed dial. Right, I'm just letting you know. It's like that's like I'm it's like you know. Uh, it's just like well, no, actually, uh, the story is this, and then it ends up with me just going, and then Barack and Michelle just said, "Okay, let's go." <laughs> you are true. You are correct. Uh, Not to mention Eric Idle. If, anyway, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so then you know, as, as I tell people. That however geeky you are, however card carrying one is on the geek spectrum, there's always someone geekier than you are. It's just simple. So I put out a geeky tweet, and someone flies in across the pond and says <laughs> and out geeks me. And I, I, I think at the end, I just I just graciously conceded. It's like, yep, yep, yep. It's, it's not so, someone, Neil. It's not just anybody. It's Stephen Hawking's friend. <laughs> 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 Stephen well, Hawking's buddy. Well played, <laughs> well played sir. <laughs> so, just to be clear, just to put this to rest, the, a, a lightsaber, if however it's designed, even if it didn't bounce off each other in a sword fight style, you can still pack enough energy to cut people in half and harm them with such a weapon. So that was yeah. never the question here. The question was whether you can actually have a sword fight with them as they bounce off each other. And if they contained high enough energy gamma rays, they would do this, mm. is the point. Yeah, it's a very much in principle <laughs> discussion. <laughs> it's, it's the future. They would, they would design it that way. They, they, I got <laughs> yeah. no problems with that. Um, so so I, I noticed on the calendar that you're not in the USA for no reason. You actually have a stage performance yeah. with the co-host of your radio show podcast, uh, which is titled Infinite Monkey Cage. I've been twice a guest or three times a guest on that show. It's a fun program. It has a similar kind of structure to us because I have Chuck as a, as a comedic co-host. You have Robin Ince, who is your comedic co-host. He's a professional comedian, keeping you 
grounded and honest, just as from, <laughs> from the episodes I've seen. Uh, and so now you've taken this on the road. This is amazing. And uh, the title, as I've read, is called Horizons, which is very deep in the universe. Oh, my gosh. So, so tell, tell me about Horizons. What are you working on now with Horizons? Well, the, the, the show is um, it's designed around these huge screens that in, in the UK, where people have heard of me, we, play, we have like 15,000 <laughs> 15, seat you know, arenas. So, so we put together this huge um, show with vast LED screens and we bring in um, as much LED as we can to the US. But it's about, um, it's a cosmology show. It's that Horizons works on multiple levels. I mean, as you, as you said, um, I'm doing research into black holes at the moment. So there's a great deal of interest in event horizons of black holes and what they're telling us about the nature of space and time. So the idea that space and time are not fundamental, that they emerge from, as Einstein said, something deeply hidden, right? a deeper structure of the universe. So there's that sort of central idea. There's also some classical music in it. There's a because it's also a celebration of us, of humanity, and what we what we could become. So where we came from, um, it's a, a, as we've discussed, I think before. Um, there's a there's a possibility, at least, that there are very few civilizations in a typical galaxy. You can even make the argument there may be one, on average, in a typical galaxy. So there's a that there there are ideas there about our value, and how we should see ourselves. Uh, what it means to be human. There's one, there's the central question. I always, I kind of like to wind philosophers up. And I always say there's only one interesting question in philosophy, uh, which is, what does it mean to live a finite, fragile life in an infinite, eternal universe? Hmm. And that's Ooh. what I start the show with. And I try... Is that before or after you give out the weed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's true. You get free, free additional help to, yeah. to process these existential questions. Yeah, yeah you, need, you, need, you need some extra chemicals <laughs> yeah. to, to get in, in, on. in addition to that, you're going to need therapy when the show is over. <laughs> well, the reason, that, I mean, I, I, essentially, the reason we've got music in it is because um, I think the questions raised by cosmology, as you yourself say, Neil, the, the questions are um, fundamentally human questions that people have asked for many hundreds of years, such as that, you know, what, what does it mean to live a finite life? Um, that, that, that you're forced to confront that when you know that there are, at, you know, in the observable universe, there are two trillion galaxies, depending on which survey you look at. There are 400 billion suns in the Milky Way galaxy. I think the, the, your immediate reaction is to feel small and insignificant. Right. But my, my argument and, and, is that we're hurried. also remarkably a little, a little bit hurried. Just, yeah, just, hurried. A, just a bit. <laughs> yeah. Like I have a bit more urgency now just hearing you say that. You're yeah. going to die this, you right. know, this century, yeah. right? I'm, I'm dead in a few days. And basically <laughs> you're talking about billions of yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's a, they're, they're challenging subjects. Um, but uh, the great artists, the great musicians for centuries have, have faced similar questions. They're, they're questions that are raised just by existing. And so, that, so the show tries to um, put those bizarre discoveries about black holes and the wider universe into some kind of context to make some sense of it. So there's physics, there's philosophy, and you're, you're on the doorstep of religion uh, with some of those questions. And uh, uh, this, sounds, this sounds like a, 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 a night out, a fun time to be had by, by all. And how many cities, this, again, in this British invasion, how many cities are you, are you going to appear? It's 26 cities. Oh, we start on the East Coast. That's so we crazy, start in, dude. Wow. Yeah, that, I know. That, you are a rock star. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. I talk, didn't I tell oh you? Oh, <laughs> no, it's yet to be proved, you see, because anyone can go and talk in 26 cities. As you said, if you're a rock star if anyone comes. True. So someone's going to. I mean, I could stand on a street corner, as you yeah. said. And, yes. and, <laughs> and an important stuff. distinction. I'm going to. Yeah, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Remember, we got a physicist in the house. You got to yeah. distinguish the question exactly. and the point you're making. Yeah, yeah. 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 you're right. You're right. <laughs> so, uh, and um, you're working on a book now. Uh, is it also on this same subject? It's it's on black holes. Um, I got really profoundly interested it, it goes back actually to, to Stephen again which we should not to name drop now it's a it's Stephen <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Stephen now yeah, yeah it's just Stephen Hawking yeah, yeah. way yeah. back in the in the 70s he calculated he showed that black holes um radiate so so although they're, they're things that we think of as prisons where it's anything that goes in can't get out uh, over a long time they evaporate away so that was his great contribution so-called Hawking radiation 
And that raised a question that he asked first, which is, what happens then to the stuff that falls in over its lifetime? When the black hole has gone, is there any trace of that stuff left mm. in the radiation in the universe when the black hole is evaporated? And that's a profound question because yeah. we Where did think... the information go, I guess? Exactly. And because it, 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 is there a loss of information? His mm. calculation initially suggested that there was, and he, he stood by that for many years because his calculation, no one could find a problem with it, but his, his calculation specifically said that black holes destroy information, which, which attacks the yeah. foundation of, of physics. Of everything. It's, yeah, it's, it's determinism. Yeah. It's so, the idea that it, so the eternality of matter itself, he called into question, and so I'm going to ask you two, was he right? No, he, it turns out he wasn't right, and, and he accepted that in the, in the end, actually. And in the last couple of years, there's been great, a, a great insight into why it is that his original calculation was, was wrong, and it's extremely subtle, very interesting. What we've discovered, which is just fascinating, is that by trying to understand the simple question that Stephen raised, we're being forced to confront the idea that space and time are not fundamental that they emerge from some deeper theory. And that's a, it's no one, no one expected that when we started thinking about black holes. Phenomenal. Whoa. Yeah. Because it, it's, that's a, for most of the way we think and most of how science unfolds, it starts with that premise. Right. You have space and time and from which all else issues forth. And you're saying space and time itself may issue forth from something deeper. That, that's what the, the lesson of black holes is it seems to be okay we, we need a whole show yeah, on man, that one. that's okay wow yeah, that's right, some juicy right. stuff <laughs> <laughs> all right well brian welcome stateside for this british invasion and we'll catch you when you come through new york because we're back in new york here and you're in la uh and so uh delight to have you and for all those uh, what, what website can we can they find you to get tickets they can find it at briancoxlive.co.uk and that that's where you'll, you'll find it all okay dude all right, this has been another explainer video with a very special guest, a uh, friend and colleague, uh, Brian Cox. Chuck, always good to have always you, man. Always a pleasure. This has been Star Talk, explainer time. Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up.